Oh man, so Phantom, after breaking out from its continuation pattern, which we covered yesterday, is now down 5%. What is going on? Dogecoin is also pumping. Let's take a look at what is going on in the charts. But first, my name is Ijazawan. I like to bring you cryptocurrency and stock investing videos where I bring a blend between fundamental and technical analysis. So if you like my perspective, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And we'll head straight into what we need to look at. So the first thing I wanted to look at is Phantom. Now, you remember in yesterday's video we end we rem i reminded you of the situation we entered this wedge broke to the upside amazing volume as you can see here from the volume candles we headed up got rejected by the two dollar 37 mark and we started to enter in this channel we got a brief fake out came back in so we're in this extended pattern here and then we got a good breakout here on saturday okay so we had a good breakout uh and decent volume but again this is where you have to be careful right a breakout on the weekends is always something you have to be cautious about if you're trading on the short term if you're long term it's not an issue right you're holding your coins like i am but on the short term if you're trading this breakout to your price target you've got to be careful look at the volume here that volume is nowhere near what we saw in this rally here okay so the volume was not impressive on this breakout and then we've seen since we've kind of rounded out at about two dollars 35 and come back down to two dollars 16 so what is going on here now we're going to take a closer look at this chart but I want to look at Bitcoin first. And because the, the reason is we know all coins are correlated to Bitcoin and Bitcoin had a little bit of a wobble here over the weekend. So you'll see here on Sunday, this is the wedge that Bitcoin is in at the moment. You will see that we had a bit of a wobble here. OK, so you can see here immediately Bitcoin fell from about 61,000 all the way down to a low of 58. OK, Bitcoin lost three thousand dollars per coin in just two hourly candles there. But the dip was immediately bought up with three really strong hourly candles, pushing it back to sixty two and a half thousand. But now we're getting a bit of a bleed out, which is very interesting. Now, I know at the time a lot of YouTubers were saying, hang on a second, Bitcoin is down because of whale manipulation and, and leverage in the system. <sighs> I don't believe that to massively be the case. There's always some leverage in the system, but at the moment, the leverage is not massive. We've looked at that previously. I think this is more to do with what we're seeing in El Salvador. Now, if you look, there's some protests going on in El Salvador, um, which is meaning that a lot of people are now protesting against the existing president, Bukele, and we know that he was the one that bought Bitcoin as legal tender in El Salvador. So that's one of the things that they're protesting against. We're going to have to see how this plays out over the next day or so. It's still early news about what's going on there and how that could be affecting the markets. But maybe that's what led to this little bit of a panic here. Although the dip was bought, but now we've fallen back into the wedge. Uh, so, uh, you know, in the short term, this is a little bit bearish in that we entered back in the wedge when we had a price target to go in. A, you know, we thought we we had a good solid breakout here and we could go out but all of this is weekend volume okay so we have to wait for markets to really get wake up and open we, we've had asia and europe is now open as i'm recording this uh we'll need to wait for the united states markets to open as well to see what kind of uh, a movement we could see here okay um ultimately if you're looking at that that's come down to test here that could come back down to about 59,800 on a test. Uh, thereafter, you're looking at about 58,000 and then all the way down to at least the bottom of this wedge is your kind of bear case of where this could come down to test and hopefully build some support off of there. So that was the important thing to look at. Before we head back to Phantom, I want to remind you of the Bitcoin dominance. And if I, you don't want to pick 11 day chart, you want to pick a one day chart. And uh, we will take a look at this and you remember many weeks ago if you guys have been watching my videos i pointed out as we were in this downward channel that we could be forming a w pattern which would be this pattern here on the bitcoin dominance okay and a w pattern would suggest in technical analysis you get a break to the upside so we could be seeing a break up to 59 on the bitcoin dominance and you saw the run we had down in dominance as all coins were gaining strength you could potentially see one going to the upside now the the case to the downside on bitcoin dominance is the fact that rsi is very well peaked okay it's a high peak on rsi and perhaps we do get a little bit of a calling off which could cause this to bend off or channel sideways okay that would be good for all coins uh, but it would mean Bitcoin is calling off. Um, me personally, you guys know my investing philosophy. I'm happy for Bitcoin to have a massive pump, right? I'm happy for Bitcoin to continue to go for its run. So I would not mind this coming here, breaking out of a W, retesting the neckline and heading higher. Uh, I would be all for that because it means Bitcoin is gaining strength and it gives me more chance to accumulate 
my favorite altcoins, which is the important thing here. Now, with that said, let's head over to uh, uh, back down to Phantom and we'll see that Phantom is getting a lot of attention recently. We've been talking about it here on this channel for a long time. So for us, this is not a surprise. We know that you've got the Abu Dhabi conference going on. Yep. So we got the Abu Dhabi conference 25th to 29th. That's next week. Next weekend is the Abu Dhabi conference. So we need to be careful on Phantom. If you're trading this on a short term time frame, please, please, please be careful. I've always mentioned you will get by the rumor, sell the news. If you weren't here for the Cardano, Cardano summit, go look at the charts, go tie it in with the date of the Cardano summit, and you will see exactly what happened to Cardano. And I don't want you guys to get caught out on doing that in Phantom as well. You know where I stand on Phantom. It's a long-term play of mine. Uh, I've made a fundamental thesis on that video. Go check that out. Watch that video. Um, and you'll understand why I'm so bullish on Phantom in terms of total value locked and how much adoption and use cases they are building out. So it's a great layer one blockchain uh, Phantom. So coming back to the technicals on Phantom, we had this wedge, broke to the upside, entered the downward channel, and we broke out of the wedge, right? Now, because of Bitcoin's wobble, which is what I took some time to just explain there, we've ended up rounding out and coming back down. Now, it looks like we're getting a bit of a support here at $2.16, but we'll have to wait to confirm if that holds, okay? So at the moment, you can see it's battling here at this, which is this high here. Now, if we lose that, you could be coming down to test uh, the yellow uh, support line here, okay? So what we're looking for is either come back down here and test, if we don't get a rotation here, that is, or what we could be seeing is if we zoom out, you could be coming down and coming uh towards here and getting your test up okay because that support line there the yellow support line is also supported by the $1.94 level as well your bearish situation on phantoms if you came back down and tested this the 166 or even the top of this wedge here at $1.52 okay so that's your bearish situation so if we bring out the EMA ribbon you can see we're just testing that EMA ribbon and fighting here so if we flip bearish on the hourly uh, that's when I'd see us coming back down to testing these levels which I explained if we can hold this and get a good bounce and the EMA acts as support we could be rotating you know at, at the time of kind of uploading this video so it's one of the two situations and we need to be prepared of which one it is but zooming back out to the daily you'll see this is exactly why you know if you have a long-term horizon on these types of coins you're not bothered at all uh, because you can see from here uh, you know we, we extended from the EMA ribbon we've come down if you call this a retest we've not even touched the EMA ribbon right so you've had a bit of a consolidation down normally if you've had a tear like this you come back down you can even penetrate the EMA ribbon and then high, head higher but we haven't you can see here we came up we didn't even get touched the EMA ribbon and we're ready ready to rotate back to the upside so really bullish setup from phantom here a lot of adoption my one thing would be to please 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 be careful of buy the rumor sell the news in the lead up to this conference i wouldn't be surprised if this starts running up this week and then selling off at the weekend so please please, please be careful and the other thing we need to notice on phantom is i'm hearing rumors that we could get a coinbase listing coming up as well again long term that is going to be fantastic for the price of phantom short term don't get caught out with buy the rumor sell the news so you've got to be careful guys short-term traders are going to be short-term traders long-term holders are going to be long-term holders right don't try to mix those games uh play that game and play it well right if you want to be a short-term trader and you want to buy the rumor because you've heard something's going to get listed on coinbase and you want to trade it and sell when that happens you go and do that if you're experienced enough to do that but if you're a long-term holder don't try to play the games of a trader that doesn't work right so just make sure we stay in our lanes that's really important now why do we have a move happening in some of these meme coins i mean so we've just had let's take let me get rid of this ema ribbon and you'll remember if you watch my videos again many weeks back i i pointed the fact out that dogecoin has not been on the run i said it in a few videos in a row because for me uh dogecoin is one of those that it goes quiet for a long long time if you go back in history of dogecoin it goes quiet for a very very long time and then boom it's out of the blocks right and you can see here dogecoin has just been sideways for such a long time okay you've had a channel between uh here between you could have bought a 16 here and then you went ran all the way up to 34 and it's just been sideways here into this wedge and now you've got a massive breakout to the upside uh let's take a look and give you an exact price target on uh dogecoin and you can see here we entered this wedge we were hovering around the bottom of the wedge and then you got a massive hourly candle literally just just uh four hourly candle sorry just now and this price target would give you a 32 cent dogecoin to come and test this resistance level so that's an interesting level here uh we can even draw that in because that acts as a 
bit of a resistance and it ties in with your price target as well. So anything around that kind of line, 31, 32 cents is your price target on Dogecoin. But because it's come straight from the bottom of the wedge to the top of the wedge, do not be surprised if you see a little bit of a retest, come back down and then head higher, right? That's what you'd want to see here. Now, if this is a fake out, please be careful traders. This could end up straight back in and you can head back up into your wedge, okay? So you want to see if you were trading this, which I'm not trading this right now, but if you were trading this, you wait for the breakout, you apply part of your funds. So let's say you allocated $100, for instance, you will put, let's say 50, you'll wait for it to retest, load and bounce. On the bounce, you put in your other 50 and you carry on riding with your stop loss, uh, giving it room to ride, okay? So that's really important there on Dogecoin. Now, if we look at the hourly chart, yeah, you can see here, it's just really strong, three strong hourly candles, and it doesn't seem to be letting up just yet. I mean, uh, volume has really kicked in. RSI is super redlining right now, but this is what Dogecoin is capable of. When Dogecoin chooses to move, it would just move. Uh, and I think right now, we're in a bit of a weird situation right now because you can see from the crypto fit and greed index, we're extreme greed. Uh, Bitcoin's doing really well. Everybody that's ever bought Bitcoin pretty much right now is in the green, and therefore people start taking more risks, right? FOMO is going to increase, your taxi drivers and your uh, your restaurant workers will suddenly start uh, thinking and talking about Bitcoin. You'll be hearing about Bitcoin everywhere. And that's where we just need to be a little bit coy, right? We need to be a little bit smart with our strategies. Just recheck, recheck our portfolios. Make sure we haven't got any silly coins in there and start to understand what we're doing here. Because right now you're in, you're, you're coming towards, um, you know, coming down into a Bitcoin season. And when Bitcoin runs, uh, people start feeling very wealthy. There's a lot of FOMO uh, and we're not anywhere near Bitcoin season yet, right? It's, I mean, we've rotated down and we're heading there. Uh, but imagine when you get down here, how much Bitcoin can run. So there's a lot of legs yet left yet you can see still see we're sat right in the middle between altcoin and bitcoin season which is what this is showing it's been a big strong bitcoin month which we understand but overall it's still been an altcoin year so bitcoin still got to run uh, and it's still got a, a big pump left in it and as it does so you will see and this is just the last 24 hours you're seeing two coins up here you're seeing dogecoin and shiba as two of the big coins that have pumped and that always gives you a clue when the meme coins start running that people are starting to feel good about the market they're feeling confident you start getting some inexperience experienced traders come in a little bit more retail money or people that you know aren't really in crypto during the bear markets coming in now because their friend told them they made a quick buck on Shiba Inu or Dogecoin which is fine I have no issue with that you guys know that I'm all pro you buying some Doge and buying some Shiba that's not an issue at all we just need to be careful in terms of our wider portfolio management and understanding how we're gonna trade this market because uh, these are all indicators which we need to understand. So for Dogecoin, uh, I could easily see this coming up to 32 cents if we get a clear breakout and some momentum and even head up to 34. Uh, just remember when Dogecoin moves, it really does move. And if I head over to the daily on Dogecoin, uh, let's zoom out a little bit just to show you the last time, you know, this you had this run is phenomenal. I mean, this first run here, but you're talking, you're running from five cents all the way up here to 45 cents. So when Dogecoin chooses to move, it really will move. Uh, so this is an interesting move from Dogecoin. And I was suspicious that it hadn't moved for a very long time. So there you have it, guys. That's what we have today in the market. Uh, go check out my Algorand and Coty video if you haven't watched that yet. But you've got Phantom calling off a little bit due to the wider issue with Bitcoin having its little dump and dip buying back up. We'll have to monitor what's happening with Bitcoin because we've seen a few red hourly candlesticks seems to be bleeding back into that wedge, sitting at 60,000 at the time of closing this video. So we need to watch that because obviously if Bitcoin bleeds, the rest of the alts will continue to bleed. But again, my strategy doesn't change right you find your favorite plays your high conviction plays you get as much fiat currency into your favorite high conviction plays and if they dip lower you continue to nibble 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 uh, until you've got a position that you're happy with so it's really important that you have conviction because all coins can drop rapidly if bitcoin drops five to ten percent all coins can move just as quickly if not more right that's why they're all coins uh, so you need to only be in plays you believe in um, and that's really important hope you enjoyed this video guys if you like my perspective then please don't forget to hit the like button like button like button and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one